Welcome to Holistic Accountant Podcast, where we aim to showcase how adopting a holistic approach in accounting and tax maximizes value for clients. Beyond traditional tasks like preparing financial statements and tax returns, a holistic accountant focuses on offering advice that maximizes personal wealth on an after-tax basis. If you enjoy this episode, please consider leaving a rating and sharing it with those who might also benefit. And to ensure you stay updated, subscribe to our weekly email. The link is in the show notes. Okay, so today Mina and I would like to talk about what do you do if you're reliant upon one customer in your business, which is not an uncommon scenario that we come across with clients. And there's obviously some pros and cons associated with that. You know, if you've got one big customer that, you know, either in terms of volume, in terms of units or hours or what, you know, depends on service or product that you're selling, or obviously and typically relates to dollar value as well and profitability. Now, if you've got one customer that's, you know, buying 80% or driving 80% of your profit, in a way, it's kind of good because you can really look after that customer. You know, you can really focus on them. You can optimize their behaviors and profitability and those sorts of things. And if you're able to, maybe you can even contract their revenue. That is, get a long-term contracted commitment from them so that you're able to, you know, plan around servicing them in terms of either buying stock or employing staff and so forth. But whilst that's the positives, there are negatives because what happens one day if either they go out of business or they get acquired or they just decide to stop buying from you or stop doing business with you. And what we thought we'd do today is what can you do if you're in that position? And we've really thought about three potential options. And the first is diversification. And we talk about diversification from an investment perspective, but we don't really talk about it from a business perspective a lot. And diversification really means what can you do to acquire more customers? What can you do to sort of limit your risk or your single point sensitivity? So you could look at things such as acquiring additional customers or sometimes actually offering additional services to different customers. So things that can actually increase your revenue, still be quite related to your business, but set you apart from your competitors and drive it an additional revenue stream. Of course, you know, if you try to diversify customers, Mina, your big customer might not really like that. Correct. Yeah. So you always got to be careful in your approach. But, you know, like you said, there's always pros and cons to everything. By diversifying, limit your exposure to that one big customer so you're not as sort of sensitive to their revenue so it could be a blessing in disguise as well. Now, if you're not able to do that, you know, maybe it's just not tenable from a relationship perspective. Maybe if your large customer works out that you're speaking to their competitors, they're not going to work with you anymore. And it's possible that's the outcome of that. Well, you can think about sort of vertically integrating within the same industry. So going either upstream or downstream, depending on kind of what industry you're in and what opportunities you have. And so another way of sort of describing that would be sort of increasing your product suite. And if you're a service business, it can be the same sort of thing, offering different services. So again, it's diversifying, but I guess diversifying into a different space while still leaning on your industry experience for your core product. Now, you've got to be careful with this, right? Because sometimes trying to do two things at once, you know, results in you doing neither of them well. So you've got to make sure that you're well resourced enough and, you know, the business can be remain focused on keeping that big customer happy whilst at the same time then building out this sort of complementary product offering. And lastly, if you can't diversify and you can't vertically integrate the business, then you just really got to embrace what you have. You've got to really double down on what you have, aggressively build your personal wealth, ensure that you've got a good cash buffer that you have in place and a good investment base that you can sort of rely on once you exit the business. Otherwise, you know, if you spend everything that you're making, then you're really going to be caught with your pants down. And, you know, that's a good point, Mina, in terms of building wealth outside of the business, because it's something I think business owners don't do well enough don't do often enough and don't do early enough but we just don't know where our industry is heading where our business is heading and to my mind you've always got to be squirreling away some annual profit to put towards building your own personal wealth so that way if you wake up one day and your business blows up or that large customer walks away at least you've got something to sort of fall back on and we're so busy often really focusing on
working on our businesses and directing cash towards growth and doing all those things. And we should do those things, but not at the expense of our own personal financial situation. So that sort of double down strategy is really about saying, well, let's say that I keep this customer for the next five years. How can I maximize the value and the cash flow that falls out of that customer? And then what can I do with that cash flow to invest it to create an asset outside or separate to the business? That way, if in five years time that customer walks away, you know, at least you've at least you've got something to show from it from a personal wealth perspective. So the things that you don't want to do is basically just ignore it, really. <laughs> You know, a lot of self-employed people, especially when they're starting out, and this touches on the whole doubling down thing, is that they ignore things such as super, they go buy themselves flashy cars, nice homes, a lot of debt they're carrying, and then all of a sudden, you know, it could be something that disrupts the industry or something that disrupts their customer. You know, look at the taxi licenses, for example, at one point in time during Stuart's era, (laughs) that kind of industry was very hard to get into, the licenses were very costly, and then Uber comes along, and then all of a sudden, those licenses are worthless and I'll bet you there's a lot of sort of taxi drivers that own those licenses that didn't have anything to fall back on they just kept investing in the business they didn't really have any sort of personal wealth that they could rely on once those licenses sort of went bust so Mina's saying you've got to have a strategy I totally agree ignoring the situation isn't really the response again your strategy could be doubling down could be saying look I've got this single customer and I'm going to grow them that's fine but I think you've got to have a strategy one thing that we've seen in the past that hasn't really worked out well is the idea to go and let's go and buy another business that's in a completely different industry. And whilst theoretically that should really work because if you've got another revenue stream that's independent of your business, that obviously makes sense. But it's really the focus thing that's the problem. And then also then the industry knowledge. You're in your industry, you know your business better than anyone else. And hopefully if you've been in the industry for a while, you know the industry really well as well. You want to leverage that knowledge. And that's really the lowest risk way to do that. Entering into a completely different industry that you know nothing about is very high risk and probably not something that we'd be thinking about. So there you go. That's some food for thought in regards to the situation where you've got a really large customer. I think the overarching theme that we want to leave you with is have a think about it and make sure you've got a business strategy. And that's hopefully something you can talk to your holistic accountant about. Until next week, bye for now.